What's up Aquarius? It's me, the Sunlight Oracle here, and I have your reading for the dates of July 16th through the 31st, 2021. This is your second July reading from me, and we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. Please like, subscribe, and share with a friend, and uh, let's get started. You, my friend, are the Queen of Cups during these latter two weeks of July, crossed by the Fool. Very interesting. I feel immediately, I just want to kind of talk about this situation before we keep pulling, which is that there is a there's a tension between wanting to share your heart, your soul, what you know, what you feel, who you are with others. That's hard for you, Aquarius, as an archetype, this maybe not always, but at this point, but you're crossed by the fool, which is like, I really want to do that. <laughs> I really do want to take a risk. I really do want to be of a more like, uh, for lack of a better term, like a more naked version of myself around, maybe it's a group of people, maybe it's just one person, but it does feel like that you're at odds with wanting to protect yourself and wanting to completely release and let go and be vulnerable, which is going on with a lot of other signs at this point. So maybe, <laughs> Maybe you're thinking of someone who's having the exact same struggle and that's why you're here for clarity. That could get really confusing, but let's go ahead and look into also your conscious mind. We get the queen of rods and in the unconscious slash subconscious, we get the hermit. A lot of major arcana and court cards here. Something serious is going on. In the past, we get the ace of cups. And in the present, we get the Ace of Pentacles. This is all such big energy, Aquarius. We're gonna go ahead and see who you are. The Empress, lovely. Your environment is strength. Your hopes and fears are represented by the Five of Cups. And the resolution or the solution here is the lovely Four of Swords, which is one of my favorite cards, to be honest. Okay, Aquarius, whoa, it's like, Let's go back to the situation at hand here, which is like, how much of myself can I share? What do I keep on lock? Because it feels like you're starting to see into the future a little bit of like what rewards financially, career-wise, something like that could, could you could be yielding from stepping into this fool energy. And the fool energy in this case, almost always really, but especially in this reading that I'm looking at here now, really is like, you know what? This is who I am. I don't care what you think. <laughs> but the, the Queen of Cups, rather, is much more calculated, much more measured, much more discerning in how she expresses herself and what parts of herself she expresses, right? So the Fool comes in and is kind of like, is very much challenging that. How much of your guard do you want to let down, Aquarius? Because I think that you've seen in the past with a little bit of being vulnerable yielded some great relationship, perhaps a relationship that we're talking about right now, or you have someone in mind as I go through this, or even just um, an opportunity in mind. But moving forward, it feels like we're moving out of human relationships and into a more profitable sort of career sort of <laughs> strata of society. It's like you, you become sort of your soul becomes what's on display. Your soul becomes what attracts others as opposed to like, you know, people attracting people. It, it, it's bigger than this. Do you understand Aquarius? I'm in your headspace right now. It's super dreamy and divey and cool. And I just feel like there's still a bit of fear regarding whether or not you can completely be free, completely be yourself, or if you have to be a bit more professional. That's how I would explain this this sort of wild energy I'm sitting in right now. Let's go ahead and talk about, let's talk about what's subconsciously driving you here, which is the hermit. And Aquarius, I feel like a lot of you and a lot of, honestly, what other signs like um, Scorpio, and I feel like Aries as well, have gone through in recent months, uh, some serious like soul searching shocker for you, right? <laughs> You're like, I'm always doing that. <laughs> but do you, um, realize how much my friends that sort of incubation period is now driving you as you move forward in achievement do you realize do you do you, are you grateful for and celebrate rather the the fruits of the labor that you have done in the past i want to say seven or eight months in terms of just incubating in terms of just thinking before you act 
I don't know if you're aware of that, but it is almost like 90% what's driving you through this whole sort of complex situation that we're discussing about how you share yourself with others. Another way to kind of look at this would be like, how do you brand yourself? And you know, a lot of people, I know that that term is polarizing, but it does, that's kind of what it feels like for me is how much of your mask are you going to curate and how much of it are you going to take off? Mm-hmm. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So the hermit, all that work is subconsciously and unconsciously driving you, but it looks like in your conscious mind, um, you, you are feeling the rewards of it. I just encourage you to kind of reflect for a moment or two on how the rewards have come to you. Like they didn't just appear out of thin air, you know, Aquarius, they came from a lot of hard work. And I think as you move forward, as you start to contend with these two energies of kind of being protective and kind of being wild. I mean, those are two, these are two very different cards, two very different energies. When you're leaning in between those energies and you're in your craving reward, it's important to remember where you've come from, the work that you've done, the people that you've known as you move forward into what I see is, is great success financially, professionally, and otherwise. Ooh, I feel like I'm speaking kind of a foreign language to my fellow Aquarians today. I'm going to trust that this makes sense. Um, I'm like, wow, what you all are going through something I'm unfamiliar with. Um, here as the Empress, there's a confidence about you at this time too, especially with this queen here. We have a queen here. We have aces for days. We have major arcana for days. And now we come in as the Empress, which tells me that people are looking to you for guidance right now, Aquarius, like straight up. People are looking to you, um, even if they're not expressing that, <laughs> even if you're not receiving the sort of like external validation that you crave it feels like there are it's all eyes on you but all eyes on you and the eyes that are on you are saying like can you guide me can you assist me can you hold my hand uh, from afar because it, it, it feels like they're invisible do you know what i mean like in other words they could be watching you online or something like that but you know this and i want to affirm that for you here as your tarot reader today and moving forward because because you're not getting that external validation even though i'm telling you there are eyes on you people are watching you you are being put to the test with strength right and strength can be like a very exciting card to see it's like yes i am strong but it can also be a bit scary because it's like this is a true test of your strength this again this situation that we're talking about back here that you i hope understand which is negotiating two sides of yourself the side of yourself that wants to remain protected comfortable safe and you know still giving and generous i'm not saying like you're totally locked up like the hermit here but it feels like you're holding back a little bit and then just like not holding back you know not giving a care <laughs> sorry i try not to swear on here <laughs> But um, with the strength card, it's, you will be challenged in that. I do feel like immense, like, uh, what do you call, like stretching energy between these two and that you will have to remain strong. The bond will remain strong until you confidently move into a direction that is better suited with your soul, your life, and your career aspirations. Maybe it is being more protected and professional. Maybe it is being totally free and innovative and experimentation and experimentation experimenting and being willing to experiment that's basically what the fool is all about in your hopes and fears i do feel that there's a bit of grief that you're avoiding here so that's why i'm like if some of you are leaning more toward the fool energy you're like i'm going to miss who i once was but that's part of evolving that's part of like the five of cups energy can't be avoided it can't be like i'm scared to grieve my former self it has to be like i know i'm gonna have to grieve my former self but not forever because i have these two cups back here these two opportunities back here that are waiting for me when i'm done with my process when i'm done with feeling my feelings when i'm ready to grow from what once was <laughs> leaving the past in the past and moving into the present. So that's, but I also, this, this position, my friends is also hopes and fears. It's not just hopes or fears. And so the hope, I also feel that a lot of you are ready for that growth. You are ready to accept that you're changing and that 
growth is coming and you know you want to step into a more authentic version of yourself or at least start to explore what that authentic version of yourself is because if you're not feeling totally content and comfortable and at home as the queen of cups i mean what better energy could come in to shake things up than the fool you know so i do feel like some of you have been waiting for the fool or waiting for permission or waiting for a sign kind of to open up to explore and also share, not just explore, you can do it on like an individual basis, but I'm getting community here as is, as you know, as the Aquarian archetype, like community is, is extremely important in understanding the energy of the Aquarius, right? And I feel like that is part of your calling, which is to share yourself on behalf of the community or the society at large or the world on a global level at large. Um, some of that's gonna <laughs> require unmasking. It's gonna require new experimentation. It's gonna require failure. It's gonna require like a real vulnerability that the Queen of Cups here, she isn't quite allowing yet, but she is curious. I do trust that the Queen of Cups is curious. And there are aspects of the Queen of Cups when moving through all of this into whatever your endeavor is here, my dear Aquarius, when moving through it, you can still maintain the professional aspect of her. You don't have to completely kill her off, right? You don't have to completely leave her in the dust. Okay. And lastly, we get the Four of Swords, which is actually a card I love to see in this position. Um, some of you may know that the Four of Swords almost always indicates rest. It indicates to me that you've been overthinking instead of just being. Uh, you know, like you're, you start to spiral out. And the Four of Swords is an invitation to really, you know, take a step back. Look at this spread, you know, pause the video and check it out if you think that you need to take a walk, <laughs> be in nature, all of that, all of that sort of meditative stuff. Because I do, when we were at the beginning of this reading, I was swimming through some dreaminess that was like exciting, but also very much in a point of confusion. It kind of reminded me of Gemini energy. So maybe some of you are working with Gemini or in a partnership with Gemini as well but there's a real indecisiveness but i think in your heart in your soul you already know what you want to do and i do feel like you do want to experiment and flirt with failure and get, glean life experience but that's scary because again as the empress i do feel like all eyes are on you while you do it so aquarius take a break here take all of this in ask yourself questions about what you're willing to sacrifice in the name of the, the collective. And I think that's a really important question for Aquarians to ask all the time because your energy again is, it represents contribution to the collective, contribution to the community, progressive thought, all of these like really Aquarian concepts that have been exercised in 2020 by 2021 sorry by so many and we're going to continue to exercise them as a collective and as a society y'all are going to be some thought leaders right okay aquarius we're going to leave you here with one card from the sunlight oracle deck which is my deck that i designed we get two we're going to pull the first one that came out confide and what's the second one we'll take two release i hope that these two words make sense to you immediately the confiding in as such an independent sign um find a fellow scorpio i feel like scorpio got this card as well but there there you can share some of these um these are like big questions about how vulnerable you want to be, what your image is going to be, what your, how your image is going to contribute to your own finances and to the collective at large. Who can you talk to about that besides yourself? You should talk to yourself about it. That's what the Four of Swords is up here trying to tell you to do. But I do feel like when we pull confide, we're being encouraged to sort of seek out others, seek out friends, seek out a therapist or whoever, whomever you can really trust and ask what their perspective is on it not necessarily to take their perspective into account but just to get a wider view a bigger picture of what is at hand and that's what i always hope to do with my tarot card reading so i hope to provide you with a wider scope of the energy in which you exist and then talk to someone else about it maybe talk to another aquarius again a scorpio this is a scorpio card which is why i say that and we're also going to talk about release which is i'm going to tell you the first message that comes in for you with release is to release your expectations i feel like a lot of you again as progressive and future thinking people future thinking archetype 
can get into the habit of future tripping, which is like beginning to really think about, you know, five years from now, if I become vulnerable, what will that mean five years from now? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I think some of you, because releases here are getting carried away with those expectations instead of living in the moment. And so I'm going to encourage you to release that future image. I know that's hard for a lot of us, especially Aquarians, and really sit, really reflect, really rest, be in nature, and be willing to just like sit with what is, you know? <laughs> it seems simple, and I know that some of these, this advice here can also seem dismissive of the complexity of human nature, but we as humans overcomplicate our nature, you know? And sometimes the best answers are the simplest ones. Aquarius, I know you know what I mean, and I appreciate you for being here. Thanks for making it through this wild reading. That was a ride, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, like, subscribe, comment if you vibe with this, and I will catch you all next week. We're already going to be in our August relationship readings, which is 